Hi there YouTube, welcome to day 2 of my 100 days of Webflow. Today we're gonna have a look at some advanced form elements that you can now directly add to your Webflow forms thanks to the new custom element feature that was introduced earlier this year by Webflow. So get ready to take your forms to the next level with this new feature. So what's the big deal? Well, HTML5 has a lot of advanced form elements that we couldn't easily use with Webflow. We would have needed some custom code or some JavaScript, but now thanks to the custom element that has been introduced earlier we can directly do that on the webflow canvas on the designer by adding the relevant html5 tag and the attributes related to that element so without boring you with all these technicalities let's have a look at how this is done on the canvas so let's have a look at what type of elements we can add now to our webflow forms in this video we're going to go over five different elements or categories of elements that i think are very useful nowadays These these will be range sliders or in the input that is type range, URL input, date and time pickers and what relates, color pickers, and finally phone numbers or phone number input with a specific format or pattern that we set up for the user. Now before these were only possible with some custom code, but now we're going to see how we can do that directly in the canvas. So let's start first one being range. So range is basically a slider that allows the user to slide through it and choose a value and this value is a numerical value that you get it in your form submission let's have a look at this so i'm gonna duplicate this div and i'm gonna name this range now i'm gonna delete this input field and i'm gonna add a custom element which goes under advanced as you can see we choose custom element and then we select this element to make sure that this element is inside a form that is a webflow form we select this element and we go to the tag and we change it to input and as you can see now it's already taking shape of an input field now i want to add my own style so i'm going to copy this class and apply it to this field and as you can see now it's an input field that looks the same as the others however since this is a range field it's not going to look the same and what we're going to do now is add attribute and we're going to add the first one being type and we're going to give the value of range as you can see now we have a range slider in our form now this is its default from 0 to 100 and each time you slide you're just adding or subtracting one we can also specify that by adding a min value let's say zero this is zero and the max value being say 10. so now if i preview this it's moving just between zero and ten and every time i move it it's adding one now this is great for say pricing sliders or filters or other formats where you need something visual something easy to use for your users and of course you can customize this further by adding let's say ticks and actually let's have a look at how to do that so i'm gonna add some tick elements or uh, ticks on the values to specify each value let's say 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent so let's see how we can do that first we're gonna add a custom element another custom element inside this div and we're gonna give the tag of data list and then we're gonna give it an id of let's say values or let's say ticks just to not confuse the namings and then now we're gonna go back to our range input and then we're gonna give it a list attribute so we're gonna specify list and we're gonna call it ticks because that's the name of the list that we want we're gonna go back to our data list and start adding options by adding another custom element inside this data list so this is gonna be the first option i'm gonna give it the tag of option now we're gonna give option a value of say 10 and this is the max value and then perhaps we give it another value of actually we need to add another option so we can duplicate these and this value will be five and then we add another one another option this value will be zero now, as you can see on my range field i have three values one being the beginning one being the middle and one being the last now you can customize this further by adding text by adding divs or icons however you like but this is the basics of it and how it should look now when submitting this on the form so let's see uh, on the published version and when we submit this form what input do we get so example yar and then we're going to choose the full value this is going to be an email and this is message we accept and we submit it now if you go back to our project and go to the form submissions we're going to see that it's giving us a numerical value go to forms you're going to see that field 2 is 
giving me a value of 10. Okay, so that's it for range. Let's have a look at the next input field, which is URL. Now I'm gonna duplicate this again because I like to duplicate things and then adjust them. So this one will be URL. And as we know, Webflow already gives us some type of input. So these are the types that are currently available, display, email, password, phone, and number. But since we don't have URL here, we're gonna add a custom element just like we did with the range. And we're gonna go to custom element we're gonna add it here we're gonna give it the class of form field and we're gonna delete this original one and then we're gonna adjust the settings of this so the tag will be input and then the type here will be url simple as that now again in the list there are attributes that can adjust this perhaps making it required perhaps making it uh, on a certain format perhaps making it disabled this is up to you depending on the use case however this is a field that intakes only urls next we're going to look at date and time pickers now i'm going to duplicate this again this time it's going to be date just date and then we're going to have a look at the different date and time pickers that we can apply now of course we can apply the normal one which is input type date and as you can see this creates this uh, date picker just the default date picker uh, this is basic html of course you can style it further with some code but this is basically just returning a date value now we can specify something like time which just returns a time value and as you can see this is time picker and just gives the times just hours we can also specify a date and time say we want to collect both values so we'll say date time local and then this will give us both the time and the date picker now you can be specific as well and say you want something like month only i don't want the whole date i just want the month so this gives me a list of months or if you want to expand your pickers you just want to choose the date separately the month separately or or the time separately however you want to do it this is all possible now thanks to the custom element i can even do week so let's check week you can see it's week 32, we're currently in week 33, and so on. Pretty cool stuff, to be honest. I really like this one. All right, so next one is the color picker. Now, I'm gonna not duplicate this time, I'm just gonna go over this one. So color, and then it's the same thing. You just change the value of the type to color, and this will give you this color picker, which is a regular color picker that is right there in the form. Now, this color picker should give you a value of the color, so if we publish this page and and see what value we get out of this color picker so if we go to the publish page we'll pick a color say red and then here we're gonna give a url which is this and then the name your some email same one and then accept i do click a lot all right so let's see what value it gave us here in the settings with forms and then we're gonna see that yeah it's giving us a hex value which is great and uh, that's something we can easily use or we can easily uh, understand now that we're with the developers all right so back to the form now we're gonna look at the last input type which is a phone number that is uh, set up to a specific pattern or a specific format now i know some countries have specific formats of the phone numbers and they would want their users to give in the phone number in that format so we're going to see how we can set that up now with the custom element so i'm going to duplicate this or yeah i'm just going to duplicate this one and then this will be phone number and for the type it's going to say tell and that's basically telephone number and then we're going to add another attribute which will be pattern so this is the pattern attribute now i'm going to specify the number so first i want first part of this pattern it's from zero to nine and i want this to have to be three digits so we're aiming to have a format of three numbers four numbers and to do that we're gonna do it like that so first zero to nine three digits and then again zero to nine three digits zero and nine and that will be three digits and then another hyphen and then we are going to say four digits now so it's zero to nine however we're going to specify four digits this pattern or this little number is available in the document below so if you want it you can copy it from there however uh, just to explain it this is saying zero to nine three digits zero to nine three digits zero to nine four digits and that allows the user to give the value only in this format uh, 
uh, we're gonna add another uh, attribute which will be title and this will basically uh, give the error message or specify to the to the user that okay we want the phone number in this format so we will say no phone number format xxx xxx and then xx xx four digits so let's see how this works let's publish this version and see how this is going to be submitted all right so let's have a look at this format now if i write one two three 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 and i try to submit i get this message that phone number format should be this so in order to fix this i will have to add one two three one two three one two three four and that will submit the form so that's basically most of the form elements that I wanted to showcase today. However, again, you can feel free to download the document below and uh, learn more about what form elements you can use. Finally, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're liking this type of content, do subscribe to the channel. We will be posting more and more videos, more and more relevant content. I would love to hear from you guys and the use cases that you guys are building. Do share with me. Again, you guys can connect with me on linkedin you guys can comment to me on this video down below or get in touch i mean i'm always ears for you guys thank you for watching this video i hope you guys liked it i will see you tomorrow in the next one